I personally have used matrices to solve all sorts of problems. For example, a system of equations, image processing, controlling the position of a robotic arm, applying weights to a decision matrix, transforming and displaying elements in a 3D space. We're going to start out with a not so exciting application of matrix multiplications, solving a system of equations. I've got two equations here, two expressions, 2x plus y equals 3, and then I've got 5x plus 3y equals 2. And what I want to do is come up with a way to solve the, uh, the, or to come up with the solution for x and y that satisfy these two expressions. Now, if you remember your matrix multiplication, whenever I multiply two matrices, I multiply the row of matrix A by the column of matrix B. So if I've got matrix B is actually a vector with x and y, then what I can do is I can say it's going to, after multiplying it by some matrix, equal the vector 3, 2. Now, what does this matrix look like? Well, remember, we have 2 times x plus 1 times y, so I have 2, 1. And then I've got 5 times x plus 3 times y, so I have 5 and 3. All right, so. I've got this, if I run this matrix multiplication, 2x plus 1y equals 3, and 5x plus 3y equals 2, that should work. If I could just solve for x and y. Well, if you've done any sort of algebraic expressions, you know something like a times x equals b, I can actually move a to the other side of this expression and say x is equal to the inverse of a times b. Could I do the same thing here? Well, in the previous lesson, we saw that if a equals 2, 1, 5, 3, that a inverse is equal to 3, negative 1, negative 5, 2. We saw that because if I multiplied this matrix times this matrix, I got the identity matrix. So what I can do is I can simply take A inverse and, and, and take A inverse, multiply it by this, like I'm taking this matrix here, moving it over to the other side, I get A inverse. And so what I'll do is I'll say 3, negative 1, negative 5, 2 times... 3, 2, all right, so all I did was simply move this to the other side of the equal sign by taking its inverse. What does that equal? Well, 3 times 3, let me start my little vector over here, 3 times 3 is 9, plus negative 1 times 2, that's minus 2, that equals 7, all right. And then negative 5 times 3, that's negative 15, plus 2 times 2 is 4, that's equal to negative 11. And so what I've got is x is equal to 7 and y is equal to negative 11 to solve this expression up here. So what I get is for x equal to 7, I have 14 plus negative 11 is equal to, I pull 11 out of 14, I get 3, which is exactly the solution that I was looking for. I substitute 7 in for x to the second equation. 7 times 5, that's equal to 35. And then we have 3 times negative 11, that's negative 33. So I have 35 minus 33, that's 2, that's the right value. So it turns out, that, that using matrices, I can solve a system of equations. Now, it turns out I can use matrix multiplication to rotate vectors. Now, the demonstration I'm going to do here is just in two dimensions, but the same thing applies. There are similar applications for three dimensions. And so what I've got is a two-dimensional vector. So I've got, let's see, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. So I've got this vector that goes across the x-axis by three and up the y-axis by four. Now, there's a very standard matrix that you'll multiply that vector by in order to get it to rotate. 
And that, uh, that uh, matrix, based on an angle theta, is equal to cosine of theta. So, in the, so it's going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. And, and let's make this clear. If I've got a 2 by 2 matrix being multiplied by a 2 element 2 by 1 vector, the result is going to be a 2 by 1 vector. So this is going to give us a new vector. So the top left-hand uh, element is just cosine theta. Bottom left-hand element is just sine of theta. The top right-hand element is negative sine of theta. Hopefully I don't run out of space here. All right. And then the bottom right hand is going to be cosine of theta. So if I want to come up with a matrix that I multiply this vector by in order to turn 90 degrees, I'm going to have a rotation of 90 degrees is equal to, well, the cosine of 90 degrees, that's just equal to zero. Negative sine of 90 degrees is negative one. The sine of 90 degrees is 1, and the cosine, again, is 0. So I've got this rotational vector, excuse me, this original vector up here. So that is, what, 3, 4 for my x and y coordinates. Now I multiply it by this rotational matrix here, 0, negative 1, 1, 0. And what do we get? Well, first of all, I've got a 2 by 2 here being multiplied by a uh, 2 by 1. So the result is also going to be a 2 by 1. And what we get for the top element is 0 times 3 plus negative 1 times 4, which is giving us negative 4. In the bottom element, this is going to be 1 times 3 plus 0 times 4, so it's going to be 3. And what you've got is in the x direction, we are going to be going negative 4 and positive 3, it is going to be right there. And what we've got is a rotation by 90 degrees. And this works for any rotation. For example, let's go ahead and try a different angle. The rotation matrix for 36.87 degrees. Now that seems like a really odd angle, doesn't it? Well, what we know if you've experienced uh, trigonometry is that whenever you have a, a 3 in the x direction and a 4 in the y direction, this angle right here is about 36.87 degrees. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the rotation matrix to see if I can get it to line up. You also know that based on Pythagorean's theorem that the length of that vector, so this 4 is, if you square 4, you get 16, square 3, you get 9, 16 plus 9 is 25, square root tells us that the length of this vector is 5. So what I'm going to do is see if I can rotate that 36.87 degrees so it lines up with the y-axis, see what we get. So the cosine of 36.87 degrees turns out as 0.8. The sine of 36.87 degrees is 0.6, which means we've got 0.6 there and negative 0.6 there. And then the cosine was 0.8. So let's go ahead and try and do this multiplication again. So we've got 0 0.8, 0 0.6, negative 0.6, and 0.8 times 3, 4. What are we going to get? Well, if I do this multiplication, I get 0.8 times 3, that's 2.4, negative, uh, excuse me, negative 0.6 times uh, 4, that's negative 2.4, so in the x direction we've got 0. Now, whenever we do this bottom element, 0.6 times 3, that's 1.8, plus um, 0.8 times 4, that's 3.2, so 1.8 plus 3.2, that's equal to 5, and it turns out what we did was we rotated that up to 5, and we've got the coordinate 0, 5. It did do the rotation. Now, we can do a slight modification to this rotation matrix to get it so that it not only rotates, it also scales. And it's pretty simple. All you really want to do is multiply by a constant. And so we can multiply this 
this, this rotation matrix by a constant A. And whenever you multiply a constant into a matrix, what you're doing is you're simply multiplying each one of the elements in that matrix by that constant. And so what we get is, and I'm going to do this in a different color, see if this works. We've got A times cosine of theta, A times sine of theta, a times cosine of theta and a times sine of theta. And now we've got our new matrix. This not only will rotate, but it'll also scale. Quick, just a quick example. If I want to do, for example, the, uh, let's just say the rotation matrix of 180 degrees, and that's just going to flip it around. So really everything should be negative. What you get is the cosine of 180 degrees is negative one. The sine of 180 degrees is zero. And so this becomes our matrix. And this actually looks ex like exactly what we'd expect. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take the three, make it negative three, take the four, make it negative four, and suddenly you're just flipped around 180 degrees, right? Now, if we want to scale, however, let's say we also want to double the length, then two times that uh, rotational matrix becomes the matrix that allows us to scale it so that it increases the length. One more quick example. Let's say that I have four elements. You know, these elements could be computers on a network. They could be processes within a computer. It can be just about anything, uh, people even. And I'm gonna number these one, two, three, four. And let's say that there are connections, direct connections between one and three, between one and two, between two and three, and between two and four. We're trying to figure out a way to represent these connections. And let's just make an assumption just right up front that each one of these connections has a magnitude or length of one. And what I can do is come up with something called an adjacency matrix. All right. Now, an adjacency matrix is a matrix that is of the size uh, we ha has the number of rows and the number of columns equal to the number of nodes or elements that are connected here. So I've got this position one, two, three, four, position one, two, three, four, that identifies each one of these nodes. Now, to go from one to one, I don't have to go anywhere. In fact, to go from one node to the same node, it's a length of zero. I don't have to go anywhere, I'm already there. But to go from one to two, I've got a connection of one. Now, one has a direct connection to two. It has a direct connection to three also. So we're gonna put a one there. But it does not have an adjacency. It doesn't have a connection to four. So our value there is going to be a zero. For two, two does, not, two does have a direct connection to one. It does have a connection to three. But it, and it does also have a connection to four. Three has a connection to one and two, but it does not have a connection to four. And four only has a connection to two. All right, it's only adjacent to two. Notice that this is a symmetric matrix. It's, if you turned it over the diagonal, it would be exactly the same matrix. In other words, if you transposed it. Now, something that's kind of interesting about this, if this is our matrix A, what does A squared look like? Well, A squared is basically this matrix times itself. I'm not gonna go through the math here. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what the result is. If I multiplied this matrix by itself, I'd get two, one, 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 and then one, three, one, zero, and then one, one, two, one, and then one, zero, one, one. And this matrix is also symmetric. Flip it over the diagonal, you have exactly the same matrix. Give it its transpose, take the transpose, you still have the same matrix. Now there's something interesting about this. Notice that on the diagonal, these numbers right here identify the number of connections coming out of each one of the nodes. There are two connections coming out of one, there's three connections coming out of two, two connections coming out of three, and one connection coming out of four. That's interesting. Another thing that's interesting here 
here is that the first matrix showed me all of the paths or walks, they're called walks, all the walks that are of length one. So I have one walk of length one from one to two. So one and one walk of length one from one to three. So one. I have no other walks that are of length one coming out of one. Well, what a squared does for us is it shows us all the walks of length two. So I showed you the diagonal here. The diagonal says we have the number of connections coming out of one, the number of connections coming out of two, the number of connections coming out of three, and the number of connections coming out of one, uh, four. But this right here, this element right here says that there is one path from one to two of length two. Well, going through three, that's a length two. If I go down to three, between one and three, I have a path of one, two. Going from, let's say, going from, how about this one right here, going from three to two. So from three to two, I also have a path of length two through one, all right? So this matrix, whenever I square it, this adjacency matrix, when I square it, it identifies all the paths of length two. Now let's talk about a cubed. A cubed, which I'm gonna write for you here, also shows us paths of a certain length, but this time they're gonna be length three. All right, and let's go back here. Whenever I look at these connections here where it says that I have two paths from one to itself, well, what I'm looking at is one, two. That was a path of length two. One, two, that was a path of length two. So it identified the number of connections to self. For example, three, I have three paths. One, two, one, two, one, two. So those were the three paths. Now, notice this, however, this matrix is showing us the number of paths of length three. Now, how to get to, how to, get to one in two different ways of length three? Well, I could go one, two, three, or I could go one, two, three. There's the two paths. How about from two back to itself? One, two, three, one, two, three. There you go. But what about this four here between, let's see, that would be from two to one. So there are four ways to take three hops to get from one to three, oh, excuse me, to get one to two. So we could go, wow, this is gonna be a little bit more difficult. Three hops, we've got one, two, three. There you go. One, two, no, can't do it that way. How about one, two, three? Could do it that way. Um, how about one, two, three? There's three of them. Um, and now I don't remember all the ones that I did. Oh, one, two, three. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Four ways to get from node one to two with, with three hops. So it doesn't say anything about the number of hops that I might have to duplicate, but it does show me the total number of hops. Okay, so I've taken a topic in mathematics and made it even more agonizing. But just be aware, if you're gonna be working with computing, well, you're probably gonna encounter a lot of matrices.